My name's uh, Jacob Dennis, and uh, I started working at the age of 14 and held a job for two summers until I was 15. Um, so I worked as an electrician apprentice, and uh, I worked alongside my uncle, who was actually pretty young compared to most of the people we were working for. It seemed like everybody was between like 40 and 60. Um, but anyway, I've uh, met a lot of people I've liked in those uh, companies, and you know, there's, well, you just meet a lot of cool people working. Um, but I did deal with some stuff, as Brian said. Uh, one specific issue that I had is uh, we had one of the painters on one of the jobs. He just made these little comments to me like every single day, like, why are you standing there with your hands in your pockets? That's not professional. And just, it was just weird. And I was only there for like a week. It was a specific site. Uh, but I was just, it was just kind of irritating to me. Um, but I did have one specific incident that I want to touch on, which I'm actually going to read right from an article that I wrote. I uh, printed it out. Um, but I was working outside at a lumber yard and I was instructed to help dig a trench using a shovel to run a, a wire underground to a shed. Um, as I was digging, one of the uh, lumber yard employees struck up a short conversation with me and my uncle, who was also a co-worker, which I mentioned in my whole talk. Um, but uh, somewhere during our discussion, he just went off on a completely different subject about uh, his hatred for millennials, during which he told my uncle about how surprised he was that I wasn't out protesting about having to do physical labor or demanding a participation trophy, like all of the other liberal snowflake millennials. <laughs> So I just, I kind of nodded and went back to work. But uh, right after I came home, I kind of wish I had said something like, you know, just taking a step. There was uh, an act, the Age Discrimination uh, Employment Act of 1967. So I was pretty limited in what I could have done. Um, but if this did happen today, honestly, I probably would have just full send, okay, boomer. <laughs> like I didn't care much for the job and I, Honestly, I didn't really need the money. I just was kind of doing it for a summer job. Um, but anyway, you know, he, he probably would have just went off on some tangent again about how I'm just young and disrespectful, which is, I, I, I feel like young people have an unfair, I guess, it's just hard to make talking points like that. I, I could go off in a completely different direction, but I, I, I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, after all this, uh, all of this had happened months before I had joined Naira, um, but I really started thinking about it more after I had joined and I actually became aware that uh, a lot of young people, including in my home state of Michigan, are also protected against uh, harassment and just discrimination in general. In fact, in Michigan, it actually uh, goes as far as to cover people under the age of 18, which is pretty unusual in most states. Um, I'll uh, leave a link to my uh, article that I wrote. I actually wrote a brief table that kind of, it, it just briefly covers each of the laws in every single state. So uh, I'll link that in the chat right after I get done talking. Um, but anyway, um, you know, actually, I think I'm, I could talk about this longer, but I know I have a pretty limited period of time and I want to give Andrew some time. So I kind of want to go off on another, another subject that I started thinking about just this morning um, about how uh, young people, people who are, you know, mostly uh, food workers and uh, employees at essential businesses like grocery stores and stuff like that. Uh, they've been thrusted into this position recently where they have to deal with a lot more verbal harassment related to COVID and mask laws, which is a really, really big issue in my home state of Michigan. Um, but uh, anyway, during the lockdown, I was around like May or June, I had read an article about some woman in Oklahoma who had shot employees at McDonald's uh, because they pretty much told her she either had to wear a mask or leave. Um, and I started thinking about it like, man, those all of them are probably under the age of 18 or around 18 or 21. And, you know, it just seems like young people are dealing with so much more harassment. And, you know, that's just some crazy issue that could have happened anywhere. But just a few months after that had happened, we had a really similar issue happen in my hometown. And I actually knew some of the people that were involved. Um, at my local Applebee's, somebody came in without a mask and he pretty much told him that he had to put one on or leave. Um, so his response was to that was to flash a gun and say, do I have to leave now? So that, yeah, I actually knew some of the people that were working while that was happening. So uh, that just hit really close to home and I started thinking, man. So uh, like obviously all of these uh, people that are, you know, 30 or 40, they're probably, I mean, there are definitely are food service workers, but most of them aren't directly dealing with people like this. Um, it just seems like 
young people are uh, dealing with so much more harassment and there's just no protection, whether it's from coworkers, except for uh, obviously in Michigan states like that and uh, against uh, customers as well. So uh, I was actually going to ask earlier, I completely forgot to, uh, does anybody else just feel free to leave it in the chat? Has anybody else dealt with uh, any experiences like this at work? You just felt like, you know, do you have any stories about verbal or maybe even physical harassment, like what happened at Applebee's? Um, I just, I thought that would be a good thing to discuss because obviously I know I'm not the only person that's had to deal with these issues. And uh, he doesn't bring a mask, but he brings a gun. Jesus, yeah, I mean, I, I live in a very uh, rural, typical conservative area, so that's pretty common around here. <laughs> I've uh, witnessed a lot of people complain about mask laws and a lot of my peers at school talk every day about how they have to deal with these issues every single day about people that will just, they're just rude, like don't leave tips just because they're asked to put a mask on and they're just verbally abusive. Um, uh, Jacob is that, you know, what you've gone through is, uh, you know, is, is terrible. Um, but unfortunately, I think my talk is going to be more bad news on uh, just, bec just because you turn 18 or 21, the dis discrimination in the workplace doesn't, doesn't really end. So I want to talk about young adults and the challenges they face in the, in the workplace. Uh, so I run a, a venture capital firm, I'm 55 years old, work in New York City. And I just, over the many years I've, I've worked, I noticed the challenges and discrimination that young adults faced in, in the workplace. And you know, I've, I've invested in many companies, hundreds of millions of dollars. So venture capital, I have investors that are large institutions and I make investments into small up and coming startup companies that typically have young workforces. And over the years, I, I noticed that the younger the, the CEO management team, uh, the better the company did on average. Um, so there's an inverse correlation to, to age. And it made me think about a lot of issues. And I got involved with uh, Naira and Alex about 10 years ago. And um, I put my thoughts down in a, uh, you know, a book might be too generous, but in a, I, I wrote them down and it's called Thank You for Being Young. And I, I gave it to and I remember for free and you can still get it for free. It's 99 cents on Amazon because they won't let you post free content there anymore. But if you, if anybody wants it for free and can't find it on the internet, just let, just let me know about it. And I think it's, it's held up. It's a nine year old document, but I think it's held up very well uh, over the, over the years. So what I've seen, uh, thank you for the link. Uh, what I've, what I've seen in, in the workplace is uh you work hard in school, perhaps you go to college, and you get out in the workforce, and the deck is just stacked against you uh, as a young person. First of all, it, things that you want to buy are just so much more expensive than they were generations ago. So you want to buy a house, you, you want to buy a car, you want to uh, pay for health care. These things have just gone up way more than the cost of than inflation has over the last uh generation or two. So it really requires uh, a meaningful income to, uh, to um, support yourself uh, in, in, today's, in today's world. So your, your wages, your, your, your income are, are more important than ever in today's economy. But you look at the, you look at the structure, and it really is you know, systemic uh, age discrimination on the different jobs that you can have. So you could work for a big corporation, you could work for a small company, you could you know, work in the public sector. Let me talk just a little bit about those structures. So um, most public sector jobs and some private sector jobs are, are, are union-based. And I'm a big supporter of unions in every way, except for the seniority system in there. So a young person starting out in a job might get half the pay of a senior person, and it's not related to to merit at all. It's just you don't have experience; you're at the low rung of the of the pay structure. And you know, we all know um, there's uh, experience matters a little, but 
I think that my biggest point is experience is overrated. And there are a lot of other factors that, that come into job success. So we've all are in high school or have gone to high school. We know that there are good teachers and bad teachers of all ages. A 22-year-old teacher might be better than a 62-year-old teacher, might be worse. There's really not that much relationship between uh, age of a teacher and, and how effective they are, it, in my opinion. I think everybody would, would agree with that. But the pay structure is radically different. Uh, a, a teacher that's uh, in her 60s might get double the pay of a, of a new teacher, will get better benefits, will have a richer pension, um, and might not do a better job, might do a much worse job. And you know what's the difference between $35,000 a year salary, uh, you know, somebody in their t- 20s might get and a $70,000 a year salary that an that experienced teacher get? Well, it can make the world a difference in the United States. That income between $35,000 and $70,000 could be the difference of being able to buy a home, getting a mortgage. It's, 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 it's being able to take a vacation or not. It's having money in your pocket if something unexpected like a health crisis comes into effect. And, and think about it. This is, this is equal work. This is two people doing the exact same job, being high school teachers every day. And really the only difference is not that one's better than the others, that one has worked at the job longer, which is a it's code word for being older. I mean, let's, let's face it. Experience on the job is, is highly correlated to age. Uh, and it's just so unfair because you have these, these great young people. They they're care about their jobs. They're doing a great job. They're as good as the, as the more senior people in their workplace, but they can barely get by on the, on the low wages. And it's systemic. It's just a bunch of old people that put that salary structure in place and, and the young people have to live with it. Okay, so let's go another example. Let's say you're, let's say you have a very high paying job. So a lot of Naira members are, are, are highly intelligent. They probably have a lot of options open to them in the workplace. Let's say they become a lawyer. So you, you work, uh, you get a law degree, you work at a law firm. Well, you can't, you can't become a partner right away at a law firm. You got to put in like eight, nine, 10 years, and then you become a junior partner. It doesn't matter how good you are. So these law firms, they'll, they'll pay better than a teacher, right? You could make $50 an hour uh, as, as, as a lawyer, but they're going to bill you out to the client at $500 an hour. And this is no, these are real numbers. This is no joke. And that extra $450. So you're getting paid $50 an hour but your value in the marketplace is $500 an hour and the law firm partners will keep the difference. They'll keep that other $450. They pay some expenses, you know, pay for the rent, whatever for the office, but then the, the difference goes in their pocket. And you're going to work at, If you pick a corporate law job, for example, you're going to work eight to 10 years to become a partner. And then you're going to become a junior partner. And you're really talking about being in your forties, maybe late forties until you're a senior partner. than these firms. And this pattern is continued. It's continued if you, if you go to med school, you need to start out as being a resident, which is a resident is a full-fledged medical doctor, but you're paid almost nothing compared to the amount of uh, time and effort. I think, especially large organizations, large organizations have hierarchies, they have salary structures that just systemically uh, take advantage of of young adults. And, it, and it's really bothered me. And what I've noticed o- over the last several years is the most talented people um, are going less into the corporation like IBM, and they're going to startup companies, which I'll talk about in a minute, because that's what I, what I do in venture capital, or they'll work for themselves, right? I mean, they're talented people that become day traders or professional poker players or uh, social media influencers. They can work for themselves and they don't have anybody, they don't have the system telling them what their compensation should be. They can make or break it among themselves. Um, but I think the, the, the largest and, and in my opinion, the best way for a, a young person to prove uh, themselves is 
through uh, starting startups, emerging growth companies. So everybody knows that you know, Mark Zuckerberg founded Facebook when he was 19 years old. Uh, Elon Musk founded PayPal when he's very young. Bill, going back older than me, Bill Gates founded Microsoft also at 19 years old. So here are, here are these, what are now the largest companies in the world, literally, were founded by people, they're 19 years old, and not only were they founded, you know, uh, Steve Jobs with Apple, Apple's the single largest company by market value in the world today, it's founded by Steve Jobs when, you know, he wasn't old enough to, uh, under today's laws, to, to uh, smoke a cigarette or, or have a glass of alcohol, but he, he founded what's now the world's largest company. And I think these startups are are terrific for 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 young people that want to get ahead. When the CEO is a young person, that CEO they'll hire lots of other young people, and there's a culture that's not hierarchical. It's based on you work hard and you can get ahead. And and what I see at my job is so many young, smart, talented people are going to startups and they're eschewing. Uh, you know, the, the hierarchical structures that union jobs or large corporations uh, ha have. And so my job as venture capital is to support the company without money. And I, I give them money as an investment and help them grow their companies. And I've had, you know, great successes where the Sosa brothers, Roy and Bertrand Sosa, uh, they were University of Texas Austin students, and they had a, an idea for a payments company called NetSpend. And you know, Im imagine being 20, 19 years old, wanting to start a company, and you're Mexican immigrants, right? It's it's a uh, it's two strikes against you right there. Um, but with my help and and some others, they founded their company NetSpend. NetSpend uh, went public in 2010, and it was sold for 1.4 billion dollars. So it's a fantastic success story. And what would they have done if they went into some large corporation or union job? They'd be at the low rung of the ladder and working their way up and, and being told, be patient. And in 30 years, you'll be, you'll be uh, you know, the, the senior level if nothing changes. And it's, it's just a bunch of BS what, what, what older people. People. I have nothing against, you know, 15, 16, 17 year olds that want to start companies. It's just pretty rare. So I haven't come across it too much. Um, usually um, a semester of college at least or is, you know, so 18, 19 is kind of the minimum uh, entrepreneur uh, age that, that I see. But once you get into the, you know, early 20s, then there's a lot of entrepreneurial activity. Um, so I empower these uh, these young people to start their own companies to, you know, say f you to the hierarchy of 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 working for thirty years where where older people can just get the fruits of their labor and and let them go and, and create and hire a bunch of other young people and let them create a, a lot of value in in what they do and, um, you know, I I think as time goes on and and hopefully I get the word out and and. Others that, you know, talented young people are not sucked into these jobs where they're promised, oh, don't worry, you know, to pay your dues for 10, 20, 30 years and you'll be at the, the you know, you, then you'll be a senior partner at a law firm one day. Well, you know what? The world changes. I, I wouldn't accept any of those promises. Things, there's no guarantees in life. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, people were promised things and then companies go bankrupt. A lot of teachers in Puerto Rico were promised that they would have the, all these pensions, and then Puerto Rico basically went bankrupt, and 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 those promises meant nothing. So, I, I think that don't don't you know my word of advice is don't let somebody tell you oh pay your dues for any amount of time. Sure, a month or two, or maybe even a year to apprentice to learn a skill or something, but don't give away a decade of your life to apprentice for for anybody. You know, if you're if you're smart, talented, young young person, you you should you know be able to to uh, 
uh, get paid based on merit, not based on your age. You know, you, you, you should deserve every dollar that you get. So that, that's my message out there. I wrote, I wrote that book, Thank You for Being Young, about it. I put a website together uh, for some of these ideas. It's uh, called yarights.org. So Y for young, A for adult, rights.org. And I, I, on that website, I listed 100 ways that adults, so 18 years old or older, are discriminated against uh, by age. Because a lot of people think, oh, once you're 18 or even 21, you're not going to be discriminated against anymore legally. Well, that's completely untrue. And there's just a bunch of, of laws in the tax code and otherwise, you know, for, at um, at yarights.org if you want to take a look at 100, 100 ways that the United States discriminates against uh, young adults. And you can also email me at, at yarights at uh, gmail.com uh, if you have any uh, additional inf information or want any additional information. Um, yeah, I'll type in a link of the website and uh, you know, happy to answer any questions as well. Yeah, um, as somebody that's uh, going to college for a software engineering degree next year, I just want to say that was really inspiring. <laughs> it's definitely uh, going to leave me with a lot to think about.